Ross, and also we'll have uh, Coach Dan Cole and Coach Izzo after Coach D. Morning, guys. Uh, Basically, after last weekend's game, you know, we were eight games into this, um, four games left, one month. So uh, opportunities are still in front of us, as I said on Friday. I think that's exciting for our entire football program and for the um, Spartan fan base. And, uh, you know, we've got the right kind of mindset as we headed into this game. Difficult challenge coming up. Uh, Penn State's got an excellent football team, as we all know. I think uh, quarterback's outstanding. He buys time in the pocket. And he's a... He's a very active runner as well, but McSorley is, um, uh, you know, I think he's the epitome of a, of a RPO type quarterback. You know, we give you run pass options and can move move uh, in the pocket to throw downfield deep. Outstanding tight end, pass catching tight end, uh, good skill on the outside. Barkley at, at the, the running back position, obviously, um, he's their leading rusher and their leading receiver. He's a feature guy. He's got two touchdowns on kickoff returns. Outstanding player in all respects, and uh, one of our nation's finest. And then on the defense side of the ball, very active defense. They're going to move around. Um, Cabinda, linebacker number 40. Uh, Mark Allen, number two. Grant Haley, uh, outstanding corner. Um, all guys that um, they play very effectively, and they, they move and blitz a lot and give you negative yardage plays. Special teams-wise, <laughs> outstanding punt returner, and then also uh, kick returner as well. So. Got our uh, work cut out for us, but to be in this position at this point in time, um, you know, it was exciting for the program. Our guys will be ready to play. Take questions. Mark, when you look at Saquon Barkley, to me at least, he just looks like a bigger Gale Sayers for this generation. A lot of people don't yeah. know Gale, but he certainly has that skill set as a runner, receiver, returner. He can do it all. Do you agree with that assessment? Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's a very good analogy for those of us who are – Remember Gail Sayers, I mean, exciting, electrifying guy, uh, break tackles, you know, very laterally, very quick, uh, cut back runner, spin runner. Uh, so, um, you know, he's an effective, effective player, great player. Mark, uh, a few years ago, uh, I guess 2015, you went through something like Penn State's going through. I think it was the same score, 39-38, loss in Nebraska in the middle of a run. Getting a team focused a week after something like an emotional loss that Penn State's going through, what did you do that week, do you remember? What's sort of the trick? I think the next week you took care of Maryland rather easily or whatnot. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know, our, our, the way we've done things here is we just move on past whatever the problem is or whatever the, um, the thrill of victory or the agony of defeat is. We just try to move past that. Uh, as I remember back then, you know, it was a tough loss. Uh, you know, we just sort of regathered ourselves. We still had control of, of what we had to do. Much like this loss, we still have control. We had control at that point in time, knew what we had to do, knew that there was, you know, it was going to be challenging, but, uh, but still, uh, you know, just pushed through it. Knew that we were going to have to play. I think it was Maryland, Ohio State, Penn State at the time, which, um, but um, our guys just come to play. But just like this last weekend, I, I think that we played hard, we continue to compete and play hard, and that's all I can ever ask of our football team. Now, what I will say is we must do that again. And um, that's the focus, is what are we going to do next? It's always been my focus here. What's, what's going to happen next? I cannot change what's happened in the past. And what my mindset has been is, okay, let's get ready for the next challenge, whatever that challenge is, on or off the field. That's what we've tried to do. Mark, uh, coming out of that game, I mean, we talked a little bit about the mix-ups and the assignments with uh, mm -hmm. what they did at, at Northwestern. Gasicki brings a, a different kind of a pass catcher at the tight end spot. What do you have, I mean, with the linebackers and safeties this week, what, how do you focus on him in the pass, the pass game? Well, he's a big target. You know, he's a big, long guy. And, you know, we've played against big, big tight ends in the past. So, uh, and he's a, he's a mismatched guy. The thing that I think that he does, uh, he's a vertical threat. He's a definite vertical threat as well. So he's going to run those what we call seven-ups where they run a corner routes and snap it up. And they're deep routes. And, um, you know, they found them last year. The game was, um, you know, we were right there. You know, I think it was 12 to 10. Uh, they hit a double move maybe on a corner blitz. And then the next series, I think they hit him with a seven up type route, um, probably 40 yards down the field. So he's difficult in that capacity, but, uh, you know, we're going to have to defend him. I mean, you know, and, you know, the thing that happens in, in this football game, I think McSorley does an outstanding job of 
of um, you know, extending the plays in the pocket and still and then launching the football. I mean, when you look at him, it's one, th it's it's five, five second count. So we have to be able to get pressure and get him on the ground and things of that nature. We can't, you know, if it's a three second, um, if it's a normal quarterback passing situation where he's not extending a play, the ball comes out a lot quicker. But he extends the play and launches it deep at times. This just in, Michigan State has a big game and the Spartans are the underdog. Your program has been able to win a lot of these big games in 11 years when you weren't expected to win. How much stock you put, not just for you, but that your program has risen to the challenge and been able to shock the world? I think it's important that we all play our best game when our best game's demanded of us and you know, we get ourselves ready for that. And I'm, I'm constantly t asking our players if they're ready to play. You know, have you done everything you, that you can possibly throughout the week to get yourself ready to play emotionally, physically, and then mentally as well? And uh, again, I go back to what I said, as long as they're, they're doing that, that's everybody. And everybody on our program has to bring value. You can't stand around and watch and practice. You've got to bring, bring value. And so uh, I just think we sort of feed off each other. Uh, we've seen the results be positive at times or enough times that we, we can have a positive vibe about what we got to do. But, but I don't think there's any mistake that this is, this is another challenge. We have a good football team. But uh, I think it's exciting to play at home and, uh, you know, we'll get up. Do you take some pride in that, though, that you've done that? Uh, you know, I just uh, – I don't know if I take personal pride. I take pr program. I think your program gains respect with that. You know, I think pride might be a little strong. Graham <clears throat> sort of uh, stole my question there about the Nebraska game, but from, from yeah. the opposite sideline perspective, do you ever notice the week-to-week the -week momentum or lack thereof that a team brings into a game or if that, that shows up at all uh, when you're facing well, a Well, I worry about it. I worry about it because, you know, how many times can you get up Every, you know, every single game, you, go, you have to get up. But we only got 12 of them guaranteed, so you have to. But I worry about it. Uh, I think we're young enough where every, every game's a new experience for a lot of our guys. So I think that's a positive. And I think our guys enjoy playing, which I think that's, that's a big thing as well. You know, you've got to enjoy going out and, and competing and playing. Can you gauge when an opponent is, is feeling it or <clears throat> has coming off a, a big loss like, like Penn State has at all? Is that something that shows up? I can't really gauge it until the game because I think it's 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 like uh, it's like you know catching lightning, I guess, in a bottle. You know, you could have a guy give a great talk in pregame, and you know, you can be all excited in pregame, and you go out in, in the game, and something negative happens, and everybody goes south. You know, or you can just be like this, and something happens, and it, it sparks everybody. So I think it's I think it's sort of random. But I think you know when you have it. I think you know when you have momentum. And you know when you're fighting momentum. And much more importantly, are, are you and The Rock uh, best buddies now oh. after a Twitter exchange? Yeah, you know, my girls told me, he tweeted at me. Not that I didn't see that, <laughs> you know. But, uh, uh, yeah, I hit him back today. So, but, yeah, who knows? Who, I don't know whose phone that was, but hopefully Gma Logan didn't have a problem. But uh, it was not my phone. I don't bring my phones to, to the press conferences. Mark, we've, we've talked a lot about the, the running game the last few weeks, and, and you're talking about how it's not just one thing. There's a, there's a lot going on for mm -hmm. it to be successful. Ha, as you've watched film the last week, few weeks, have you pinpointed any of those certain spots, or is it different things each time? That, that I, I think it's successful? a lot of things, as, as football is. I mean, I think just like when you're – Throwing the football, you know, there's protection issues and there's throwing issues and there's route issues and, and sometimes they get the right coverage for you. And the same thing uh, I think happens in running the football. We need to run the ball more effectively with our tailbacks. I think that's, that's the most important thing. I think we can run it a little bit with our quarterbacks and our wide receivers and those type of things. But I think with our running backs, you know, we need to be, be more effective. Um, you know, I don't think I'm telling you guys anything you don't know because that's what we intend to do and that's what we were going to hang our hat on coming into this football season. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, there's the people you're playing against are pretty good. There's the youth. There's, there's mistakes happening. There's technic technicalities or fundamentals. Usually it comes down to fundamentals, and usually it's one thing. It's not, 
it's one little thing here or two little things there out of five or six or, or something like that. But we'll keep working at it. And um, at, at some point in time, you know, it'll respond. And I, and I know you talk about you have to run. You can't just throw all the time. Right. But are there times where you get to a point where you say, maybe we need to throw more early in order to loosen up that so we can run a little bit more? Well, we did that game. last week. Yeah. I mean, we threw down the field the first, the first series. And, um, you know, we ran a little bit as well, but um, we, threw, we threw initially. Uh, so I, I don't know. I think that, you know, coming into the season, how do you not turn around and hand the ball to your tailbacks 20 times a game with the tailbacks we have? I think you have to do that, you know, collectively or individually. If somebody gets the hot hand, you got to hand it to them. Um, and then you got to start to play the down and distance. And as the game progresses, you start playing the situations within the game, which can dictate pass or run based on those things. But, but um, you know, we've always prided ourselves in having a thousand yard rushers here. We've had great tailbacks here. And really, the reality of the situation is that every tailback we've had here has gone on to play in the NFL. And that's a statement not just to that individual, but that's a statement, I think, every one of them that's been a featured guy here um, for 10 years. That's not a statement to just the individual. That's a statement to the guys who are blocking for them, and that's a statement to the structure and the, um, the concepts that were being used. So, you know, that's what we would want to do because that gives us an opportunity to stay balanced. But, you know, like I said, you know, things change as the, as the game progresses. but. Our intentions are there. Um, Mark, last week, three more fumbles. Is it at this point in the season? Is there anything more you guys can think of to do to, to clean that up? And obviously, well, at, a, at a point where you can't really afford it with this you know, we, schedule coming up. It's, <laughs> I assure you, it's being stressed, and it's a point of emphasis and a point of frustration. But you know, the ball is going to come out, and, and you know, Penn State's the best in the conference at takeaways right now. That traditionally has been our job or our our role when we've won championships. And again, it's a game-to-game -game thing. And what we have to do is now is assess every game and, and go, go into that game and say, did we win the turnover margin, did we not? Um, those type of things. But you know, I, I don't have an answer for you. I, I can just tell you that, that every, it's on everybody's mind, and, and we've got to hold on to the football. Um, and um, collectively, we're working at it and drills and everything else. So. I've already told you I thought the play calling was excellent Saturday, but I was talking to someone from Northwestern last night, <clears throat> and they said they were surprised that the pitch that you had so much success with against Minnesota, you didn't use it. They were concerned about you taking that. And looking to improve the running game, were you a little bit surprised that you guys didn't use that? We did use it a number of times, but, they, but we didn't get the edge, and uh, it wasn't as successful as we wanted it to be. Um, and so, you know, Consequently, we didn't use it as much. I think we we tend to, to stay with what's going good, and I, you know, that was a big play for us in the Minnesota game, as well as um, a little bit in the, the Michigan game. Mark, is there anything in particular you've seen with Cody the last couple of weeks to allow him to really take off to you know go from kind of just a nice story to all of a sudden looking like potential number one receiver? Well, I think every everybody is always on a different. Um, Timetable, I guess, as they as they mature as a as a player uh, within the program, and uh, you know he's a quick learner. He's got skill set. He's cut. He's made the 50-50 catches. That's what he's really done. He's made catches with guys hanging on him and big plays. And so when you see that, you tend to give guys more opportunities. He played 73 plays in the game on Saturday, which is far more than he's played. And he was at the point of attack, you know, or he had the ball thrown to him more often, and. You know, basically, that's what we've seen throughout practice to some extent, to a large extent. Uh, and then, um, you know, as the games have progressed, you know, he's made plays. I think beginning probably with uh, the Minnesota game, maybe, he started to sort of take off. But I think we've, like I've said before, I think we've had different guys all have their big games periodically. So it's not like he's the one guy that's getting the ball thrown to him. We've got others. In the last couple of weeks, Barkley's really impacted the game uh, early, you know, kickoffs or ripping off an early run. Uh, how much more do you have to game plan for him versus maybe a, a typical Big Ten running back? And are you planning on doing anything early, defense or special teams, to maybe limiting what he's able to look at or what he's able to do? Well, I think they're going to get him the ball. I don't think there's any way that you can really prevent him from getting him the ball. Maybe on kickoffs you could a little bit. But, 
but they're going to get him the ball when they want. Um, he's a great running back. We've played other great running backs. We've played him before. I think this is our third year playing against him. And um, so I think we understand who he is and what he represents and how difficult it is to defend and everything like that. He's a great player. So, you know, you want to you want to win a football game, you have to shut down good players. Mark, on your offensive line, notice that the Beatles bounced between two positions now, potentially. I guess, what did you see from him when he was in there with Jarvis at right and him at left? And I guess kind of assess where Tyler Higby is right now in the rotation. I think all three of those guys uh, – I don't think all three of those guys are sort of in the mix in terms of playing. Who cares who plays? I don't care. You know, State sort of rolls those guys in there by series. A lot of times as the series begins, you know, I think Beetle was in on some longer series and Tyler was in on some shorter series, and that's just the way it went down. I don't think there's any lack of confidence in Tyler Higby or David Beetle or Kevin Jarvis. I think they're all young players, especially Higby and, and, uh, and Jarvis. And they continue to, to learn with every with every snap. They're learning something because there's I think the thing that we gotta understand or or I ask our players to understand is that every single game that we play, there's a new game plan, there's a foundation, but there's a new game plan because it's new defenses, new personnel, things that that uh, Penn State does on defense is different than Northwestern did on different defense. So things change and it's the collective learning process as you get ready for the next game, well, that was last week. This week we have to do this or make this call or do this type of thing. I think the intricacies of that and then the fundamentals. Um, and, you know, offensive line play is, is exact. If you don't have your weight on the right foot, correct foot, or if your hand placement is wrong, um, you're not going to win. And then there's just the aspect of you've got to win. You've got to beat the guy in front of you. You've got to do, a, you know, like a board drill. you basically got to get their guy off the rock, if I could use that word. Just trying to throw it out there in case he's he's watching. Let's lighten it up a little bit. In honor of the holiday, you must have trick or treated as a kid, right? Actually, I took a picture of Coach Staten today, and he's dressed up as the big bad wolf. Full costume, of course. Did you have a favorite get up when you were a kid? I don't know. I can't remember that far back, actually. You can't remember anything you were? No, oh. I really can't. Um, I can guess. Well, go ahead. I probably was a cowboy or something. <laughs> gun low. My gun low. <laughs> no, I'm not going. Be working. Any other good questions? <laughs> kind of going back to Barkley. Um, I guess, are there similarities with Justin Jackson um, and the things that he does, yeah. the versatility? And how do you, who have you been using to kind of simulate those guys the last two weeks? Uh, yeah, there, there are some similarities. I think they're both cutback runners. They have great vision. They catch the ball extremely well. They're used out. They're used on flares, you know, run after catch type things, and, which is difficult. They run wheel routes down the field. Um, they'll run tailback shoots down the middle of the field. Uh, so there are some similarities. I think Justin Jackson, as I said last year, was a, last week was a very is a very very productive player. I think Barkley is equally as productive and probably more productive if you give him another year. Um, but um, they both had tremendous careers and are active players, very active. And as far as who's who have we used, variety of people. You know, um, you know we stick Connor Hayward in there a little bit. Uh, we put. Um, Andre Welsh in there. We've used Austin Andrews in that position. He was a tailback in high school. We've used TJ Harrow in that position a little bit because he's been a tailback in high school. He's a you know 10, 700 meter guy. Uh, so we've got guys in there that have played in that, you know, and just working it. Good guys. All righty. Thanks.